Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Tony Pellegrino, and uh, thank you for joining us. This is part of a live tech talk we do here on Facebook every Tuesday and Thursday. So um, we've got all kinds of good stuff for you today. Uh, we're going to talk about everybody's favorite topic, tires. Everybody wants to talk about tires. What about them? We've got lots of tech today about tires. We're going to talk a little bit about wheels and backspacing if we get enough time, but we're going to see how far we get. Today's entire show will feature Mickey Thompson. Um, they've got some great new news out that uh, they've just introduced some new tires. So we're going to get there in a second. As part of this tech talk, we always welcome your questions and comments. Please make sure you include some detail about your question. You just type it in as a comment and uh, Debbie is here to help read those off to me. We've also got Alex and Jamie here in the studio as well. Featured products. I've got uh, two things I want to show you today. Um, we just got these back in stock, which are our armrests. These drop right into the holes that already exist on your half doors. Um, it's 14 and 1 8 inches exactly, center to center. They drop right in. It's, it's right where your uh, window, you know, if you've got the removable upper windows, it's right where they go. Um, it is a very nice padded surface. It won't get hot and burn your arm. Um, I just showed these off a bunch on the new JL half doors. And I've always run these on the Terramoto and all of my Jeeps, actually, all the way since the back in the YJ days. So uh, cool product. It's even got a nice little um, like velour surface on the bottom to keep from scratching your paint when you've got them on there. So uh, check those out. I think they're 99 bucks a pair. Uh, good price. It's a waterproof material. Really, really nice. Uh, second thing, long awaited, the JT rear inner fender is finally done. Um, we're fitting these up, doing the instructions, and uh, these will now uh, get photographed and added to the website um, immediately. So um, we've got these things now finally done. Sorry they took so long, but uh, they were a little bit complicated. All right. Uh, we are on to the tires. Let's, let's talk about... Uh, Mickey Thompson. Oh, actually, <laughs> one, one more quick update. For all of you who signed up for our swag, who gave us your name and email and Jeep type and all that stuff, those packages will be shipped out on April 14th. So um, I just wanted to give you an update on that. So um, you should see those soon. We had to gather all the stuff up in order to get that out to you. Um, if you're not familiar with our website, uh, these, these blue bars have drop downs. As soon as you mouse over them, things will show up, including our galleries, which have just been updated. Uh, the new Growler, uh, the Aftershock JL, um, lots of good stuff in all this. Our search box is super smart. You can type in anything, any part of the description, any part of the part number, and it will show you everything that that um, relates to. All right. Uh, oh, here's an example of the drop down, so you can kind of see what that looks like. All right, Mickey Thompson. A few days ago, Mickey Thompson introduced this is a, this is a big thing for them, a brand new tire. Now, for a lot of you, we've talked about the Baja Boss tire for months, years already, right? Um, we're we're still calling it new and great. Um, because we're really excited about it. But um, what they've done now is the Baja Boss that we've been running all this time is now called the MT or Mud Terrain. Now they've got the same thing in an AT. So this is super cool, very exciting. Um, we've actually got a tire here. This is what it looks like. It's got a, like a pretty aggressive tread that's siped and it's got the same kind of sidewall like the MT. So um, we've got one here. Let's, let's take a look at it, Alex. It's right here and you can see, you know, here's the MT version, here's the AT version, and it's got that same raised kind of sidewall on it. it the, the actual carcass construction on both is the same. So, um, and this is vastly improved over the MTZ P3. 
uh, AT. So, um, or sorry, the ATZ uh, P3. So um, let's go over, I'm gonna go over a few of those features while you guys are looking at, um, we've also got a screen on some of this stuff too, that uh, Alex, do you need me to turn the tire? No, that's good, okay. All right, so back on the screen, Alex, maybe you can zoom in on this and uh, show everybody. I'm gonna tell you about a few of the features. Uh, 50,000 mile tread warranty, all new silica, Reinformed, reinforced compound in the tread. Um, we've got extreme side biters, which are those, those side pieces here that we were showing you. Um, this is severe snow and service rated as well. That's a, that's a three peak rating. It's uh, very hard to get that for a lot of tires. Um, it's got the Power Ply XD construction. So that's the, the sidewall that we're always talking about. And then the asymmetrical uh, tread design. So um, let's see, the next slide we got here is this talks about how it compares with the ATZ, the, the predecessor to this from Mickey Thompson. So the old tire 45,000 mile warranty, the new tire 50,000 mile warranty. Old tire symmetrical, now asymmetrical tread design. Old tire had a, had a T4 silica reinforced tread compound. Now it's an all new T1, which I can tell you is really good. Um, the old tire had a three ply construction. The new tire is their power ply XD construction. Um, the old tire did have side biters, but the new side biters are 150% deeper. The old tire was mud and snow rated. The new one is that three season uh, or all season rated, which is uh, far and above that. The old tire, 24 sizes. The new tire, 44 sizes. That's, that's pretty significant. Um, the old tire was a standard black wall. The new tire is a embossed. Um, it, it's, it's a really nice looking sidewall. Um, super high quality, the finish is unbelievable. And um, the old tire C through E and the new tire C through F load rated. So pretty, pretty good on that. Um, I think you're gonna be real happy. So whether you're driving a Jeep that you do more on-road than you do off-road, or you've got a pickup truck that you're using as a tow rig, this is gonna be a really good tire. Um, the one that we just showed you on the floor here is the brand new ones that I got for my truck. So um, yeah, we're, we're pretty excited about that. All right, so here's what um, we noticed. Uh, I got to actually test drive these a few months ago as part of a, a media launch that Mickey Thompson did. And I can tell you they are much smoother on the road. They're much quieter. Um, they have better dry handling and better wet handling and um, overall superior winter performance. So um, really, uh, they, they've upped their game. Um, I'm gonna stop right now. Deb, have we got any questions so far? Uh, no questions, just lots of, lots of our friends viewing today. Awesome, yeah. awesome. Anybody notable you wanna? Sure, um, yeah, we've got Kevin Hudson, Ken Brandt, nice. um, Rick Harrington, Mike Uresco, Leif Barron, VB Tom from Virginia Beach, Esther Parrott Newcomb, Logan Delarino, Bill Witten, Stephen Horsch, uh, let's see, Sam Walker, your mom. <laughs> All right. Mom hey, again, mom. Right? <laughs> uh, Missy Howard, Bobby Bellomi. Uh, lots and lots and lots of. And we should viewers. have a couple of the, actually the Mickey Thompson guys should be on there too. So if you have any specific questions, feel free to type those in. We've got people standing by that can answer these questions. So um, really, really excited about these tires. Um, of course, it's a great compliment to the MT tire that we've been running um, and racing on. Um, if you didn't know this, on the Aftershock JL that we just completed, we put on the DOT version of that tire, on, which is the mud terrain 
um, on that vehicle. And uh, I have been pleasantly surprised at how well that has performed. So I'm um, pretty excited about that too. All right. What, it, what Jake Hudson asked um, what the ETA is on the 42s. <laughs> okay. So um, right now where we're at, uh, everybody is with <clears throat> this, getting this new AT tire out was really kind of Mickey Thompson's focus. Uh, for their company, especially during COVID. Um, so now that this is off and off their plate, um, that's going to help them focus on getting us that 42 that we've uh, been long awaiting in the mud terrain version. So yeah, good, good question. Uh, Stephen Williams lives on, in Indiana. He wheels in Kentucky and Tennessee also. Cool. He's had multiple sets of MTZP3s, lots of buddies running Baja Boss. We all love our tires. Hearing really mixed reviews on the Baja Pro XS here in the Midwest. Yeah. What terrain was that tire designed for? Yeah, that, you know, that was really kind of that... Uh rock bouncer, mud guy. Um, but, you know, I got to tell you, I've seen them out here on the West Coast. I've seen them, uh, we, you know, there were a bunch of people who had them on the last LJ adventure and um, they did surprisingly well. So depending on the one you have um, in terms of the DOT compound or the sticky compound, um, there's definitely some good variety. But, you know, it's it's got a a look to it as well. You know, that's a much more aggressive, it's a wider tire. So it just kind of depends on uh, what you're personally looking for. Uh, me, I like the Baja Boss. That's totally my style. I like that tall, a little bit more narrow profile, that like 1350 width instead of a 1650. So um, yeah, just, you know, it's great that Mickey Thompson offers such a wide variety of, of tires available to everybody. Yep. Paul Kulik, uh, do you know what the sidewall weight rating is? Want to put them on my tow vehicle, five uh, F-350 with a 3,000 pound truck camper in the bed and my Jeep on the trailer. Tongue weight is about six to 700 pounds. Yeah, so that, that's, that's a great question. And we, we covered that a second ago, but these new AT tires go all the way to F. So not just an E load rating, they go to F. So, um, and that's, that's for 35 inch and under, you can get that really uh, high load rating. So um, definitely, by the way, everything we just pulled and showed you here is on Mickey Thompson's website. And um, you can go over and check that out and get all the details. There's a, uh, um, I was just over there <clears throat> and there's a large, you know, size, listing but we just told you there's 44 different sizes so you can go over there and find the exact size and everything you want um like i say i just got mine my set the other day i know they're available so um yeah check out your local tire store and get some of these because this is definitely going to be the hot new tire richard jedlowski asked um if the tires are a true are the tires a true measurement yeah so um one of the things that I like about working with Mickey Thompson, and I've, I've had a long conversation with their engineers, is um, I told them we really wanted true tire sizes. That was important to us. So um, he assured me that they would really stick to that. And uh, it also falls within some industry guidelines. Um, he, that was something I didn't know, but um, that, that more and more people are supposed to stick with that. So part of it has to do with the construction. Right, so if, if you're looking at um, like an IROC or something like that, those are not built the same way that these um, high production um, radial tires are built. There, there is a different set of standards for production and sizing when it comes to a tire like this. So um, they, they maintain a much tighter tolerance to keep true size. Yep, good question. Uh, Rick Rudell, do you know when 40-13.50-17 uh, Baja Boss is going to be available? I cannot find them. Uh, we, you, you need to pick up the phone, go back to our website, call our phone number. We have them in stock. You're just not calling the right people. <laughs> 
uh, Leaf Baron commented, I just got 39 inch K KM3s. Hard to get the Mickey Thompsons here in Los Cabos. Uh, yeah, I mean, we ship worldwide, so no excuses. <laughs> Uh, John Henry Nemeth, dear sir, 33, 14.50, R15, Baja Boss, AT delivery times four to the UK. Oh, I, I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't know about that. Um, that, you know, you might be able to on uh, Mickey Thompson's website, or if the Mickey Thompson guys are on, maybe they can reply to that one. Um, so, yeah. But I, there, I think through their website, there is a feature to contact them and ask a question like that, for sure. Terry Mode is um, loving those 43s, kick ass in Moab. Yeah, nice. Nice. What else you got? Go I've, ahead. Tires are always everybody's top topic. Yeah. So, um, you know, I can tell you that our experience with this new sidewall construction has just been fantastic. I have pushed these tires to the point where I, I was begging to get a flat tire and didn't. So I've been really pleasantly surprised with their heavy duty construction, their ability to, when, when you're off camber, they, they won't crab walk sideways, they really hold their line. Um, I even had one of the engineers who designed these tires in my Jeep with me demonstrating how well that worked. So, um, yeah, the, the, this tire definitely, you know, because it's one of the newer tires out, it's really got the latest in technology in it. And, and that silica compound is um, something kind of pulled from some of the street bike tires where they're running dual compounds at high silica rates. Um, the, all of those things make a big difference in traction. So, yeah, really, really these guys are on their A-game for sure, Mickey Thompson. Uh, Rick Harrington, does Mickey Thompson plan in the future to do any pits at races like BFG? Um, you know, that's a good question. They already do um, at King of the Hammers for Ultra 4. I, we've talked briefly about doing some Baja stuff. If, if we did, I know that they would come down and, and support like that. So um, I, I just, you know, a lot of this um, during the, these times right now is a little bit difficult for the bigger companies to commit to do certain things, but uh, I know it's on the radar for sure. Yep. Keith Crum, what do you think the mileage rating will be on the Baja Boss MT? On the MT, I don't know. Did you remember seeing that, Alex, when you were scrolling? <clears throat> no, that's the AT. Yeah, so the MT. Yeah, I, Alfie got at least 40 out of his, so, yeah. And that was a 40-inch tire, so his MT. Yep. Jason Adams, do you think the 42 Baja Boss will be a 17 or a 20? Um, actually, I requested that it'll be a 17 first, and then they'll follow that with a 20. So, because I, I, I explained to them that if they made it in a 20 only, it would eliminate everybody with a 17-inch wheel, and that would really raise the barrier to people being able to afford that, right? Because now you have to buy tires and wheels. So, um, they agreed, and uh, they're going to come out with the 17 first. Yep. Looks like we've got Don Sneeden from... Um, awesome. Don's the man. Yeah. So, Don, uh, feel free to chime in on that one gentleman from the UK looking for when the ATs will be available over there. Um, I Sorry, I don't have any ETA on that, but you, you probably do. Robert uh, Quiros, what size of tire should I run with Dana 30 CJ7 and Chromoly drive shaft? Um, you could safely run a 35, 1250. That, that would be fine. You know, certainly a 33, but if you, if you want to get up to a 35, you could do that. I wouldn't be a wild man, but you can do it. Mike Uresco, are these ATs as true to size as the MTs? Yes. Yes, they are. Yep. I'm really looking forward to this tire because I've got the ATZ on there now, and I'm going to be switching over to these because we test drove these um, back in November, and I really liked the new tire. So we, we, got, we drove them on crazy stuff, and they were, 
they were performing almost as good off-road as the MT. So we, we were all quite impressed. We even got them in some mud and stuff too. Uh, Brandon Gray Hada, 2001 Jeep TJ, front Dana 30, rear Curry 9 inch, 3 inch short arm lift, 35 inch tires. I'd like to stretch it. Should I upgrade the axles first or stretch? Is a front Curry 44 good enough for 37s and trails like the Rubicon? Yes. Yes. You're fine with that 44 and 37s. That, that's the... That's the limit though. Just, you know, understand that, that you're there. And um, I certainly wouldn't push it. Um, I, I was trying to drive mindfully. You know, once you get into the bigger axles, um, you can be a little bit more abusive, but um, you know, that, that 44 will be fine, especially if it's high pinion. Yep. Mark Colorado would like to know how these tires will do in Colorado terrain. That this is where this new version, you know, given that it's got all this siping and let's go back to that picture. Um, there, there's a pretty good picture. You can see all the siping. I know that uh, they worked really hard to get this um, severe service rating in this three, uh, I think they call it three season or three peak um, performance rating. So um, this, this here, this, 3 PMS is the symbol that's on the side of the tire. And um, that's, that's a very high performance, all weather rating. So I think you'll be quite pleased. Jeremy Duper uh, asked if Mickey Thompson is planning on making a hybrid ATMT tire, something between the Baja Boss AT and the Baja Boss MT. Well, uh, honestly, when you get to see this up close, the, the voids between the tread are actually quite a bit bigger than a lot of the other ATs that are out there. And um, I feel like this tire is definitely getting there um, where, you know, I, I think you'd be pretty happy with what you see here. Yeah, yeah, he's gonna, Alex is gonna give you another side profile here. So you can see and now they're, they're um, mirrored, right? So you got this row of tread here and this one and then out and out. But look at the, the gap, you know, in between these side lugs. I mean, that's, that's pretty darn good for an AT tire. And um, the way the tread is arranged, it um, really is quiet. So even though you've got those big voids, um, it's super quiet. And then um, there's some features down inside that, help break um, the stick. So if you get mud in there, it's part of what help breaks the mud out of there. And um, these sipes are, are really important. I mean, we used to take tires like this and go get them siped, but now even these are coming with some additional sipes in them. So um, that's, a, that's a really fine balance, by the way, because if you over a tire, it'll start chunking. So um, to have the factory do it like this, then you know it's, it's gonna be good. So. Scott Carleen asked if uh, the ATs are a new platform or based on the current Cooper design. Uh, this is a new platform uh, that's off of the Baja Boss MT. So that same uh, carcass construction with the good sidewalls. And um, yeah, this is, this is really nice. I, I'm glad to see them really step forward. You know, especially in a you know year that wasn't exactly great to release a new product. You know, these guys really stepped up and and came out with something that's pretty nice. So, uh, your buddy Kevin Silk said yeah. he's going to be at Daytona Jeep Beach this ah, year. Ah, nice, nice. Yeah, I'll be out there too. I think I get it on Wednesday, so um, I'll see all of our East Coast folks out there at Jeep Beach. Um, after that, we've got a high desert roundup coming here over Memorial Day. That's a big one right here in Barstow. If you've never been to that, come join us for that. It's a, it's super fun. We run lots of trails every day. So, um, yeah, and that's a nice four day weekend, you know, to get out there and do that stuff. So please join us. After that, I'm going to be out at Rock Junction in Grand Junction, Colorado. And uh, that's a fun one too. If you've never been out there, 
Uh, we'll be running trails in Montrose. We'll be running them right there in Grand Junction. And um, we, we also go elsewhere. Sometimes we go to Moab, sometimes we go over to Rangeley. So it just kind of depends on what, what level the group's at and where everybody wants to go. So super fun. Chip Mezen uh, said, Tony and Andy, thank you for suggesting the JK Build book to my fiance, Terry. Your customer service is off the charts. Also, I want to thank Keith for always taking my calls and helping me so much with my TJ build. Everything I've bought so far has exceeded my expectations. You guys awesome. rock. Awesome. Glad to hear it. That's what we strive for. So, yep. Awesome. I hope everybody has that experience because we, we're certainly trying. Uh, Tyler Lawson asked if we were going to Daytona. Yep. Yep. I'll be there. And uh, I'm going to be there with Jeff Garland from Bruiser Conversions. So he's got two Jeeps, a JL and a JT that he's just outfitted. And I'll be there in his booth with him uh, representing Genrite while we're there. So he's doing a lot more of our elite and tracer builds for us on the East Coast. And uh, for anybody who wants a V8 at the same time, man, that's a, a great place to get it done. So, bruiser conversions. Corey Lone Wolf Picard, how well will the Maxxis Razor tires do on the terrain out by you guys? Yeah, I know I already feel like I should have stuck with Mickey Thompson's like I always have, but wanted to try something different and already regret it. And I don't even have the JKU back together yet. <laughs> you know, most of the tires these days are, are pretty good. Um, we're, we're running the Mickey Thompsons for a few different reasons. Um, one is they're very serious about the Jeep market, and that means a lot to me. You know, a lot of these other tire manufacturers offer a light truck tire that is also available or could be run on Jeeps too. Mickey Thompson wants to build the tires for Jeeps and make sure we have the right sizes with the right load ratings, meaning the sidewall, and um, they're really focused on it. These guys drive Jeeps that like the, the major uh, management in the company drive Jeeps. So it's, it's refreshing to me to work with people like that. Uh, additionally, they're American made, can't go wrong there. So, um, and then on top of that, they're on the forefront. You know, they're put that, that Baja boss won the SEMA award. So, um, you know, th this is, they're doing the right thing. These guys are on their A-game, and, and those are the kind of people I want to be associated with, for sure. Yep. Dusty Walker, I'm, go I'm going to be the odd guy out. We do a lot of off-roading as well as show and shine competitions. We've always had issues with tires becoming stained hmm. and keeping that deep black look. How will these new Mickey Thompsons hold up in that aspect? That's a good question. Um, I've, I've battled with the same thing. And the only thing that we've found will clean tires and get them back to that original black is snow. You got to go run them in the snow and man, it'll pull them right back. Um, the next best thing is sand. So um, I know it's, it's really tough and I don't like putting all that tire shine stuff on my tires because then the next time I go wheeling, it's like a slippery fest. But um, yeah, I, I know it's a challenge and there's a lot of the, you know, especially like where we just were in Moab, that red dirt just stains the, the casing. And um, I, I feel you, it's a, it's a challenge. It just happens, you know, with rubber for sure. Unless, you know, Don or somebody on from Mickey Thompson has another solution that they're welcome to type that in as well uh pat whitney writes going with one tons on my 05 tj lj i'm in indiana and want to do uh, moab and wind rock i'm running 37 crawlers now but thinking 40 or 42s these would be dedicated for off-road with minimal street use I usually switch out to go wheeling and switch back after playing. Thanks, Tony. Cool. Um, so in that case, you know, Mickey Thompson offers their Mud Terrain Baja Boss in a sticky version too. So um, if you, you know, want to go that route and get the extra performance, 
um, that's a great way to go. For everybody that's watching, you know, that, that's on a 40 right now and wants to go to a 42, just remember that that's like the difference of going from a 37 to a 40, that there's a serious additional drivetrain stress. So make sure that you guys have a fortified, you know, driveline axles, everything, or it's going to rear its ugly head. So you got a lot of bite with a 42 inch tire. So just keep that in mind. What else you got? Deb, you got anything else? Uh, I'm checking. Dude. Okay. Um, why Sorry. don't you go ahead and I'll get caught up with questions. Okay. Let's see what, uh, what else we had in store here, Alex. Um, okay. Of course we've been talking about the, um, the Baja Boss MT, which is the one we've been running for the past couple of years that Jordan's been racing during King of the Hammers. Um, this tire has been fantastic and uh, really offers that aggressive look. Um, I wheeled these in the Midwest and East Coast, um, was able to get them to clean out really nicely. I think, well, <clears throat> I know everybody that saw me there was super impressed because right after I did the obstacle, they would all come right over and go, what tires are those? You know, oh yeah, these are the new Mickey Thompson's. So um, yeah, I, I knew they worked good and they, everybody was impressed with that. So uh, let's see. And those are, those are available from 15 to actually 24 inch wheel sizes. So there's a lot of wheel sizes available um, in the, the Baja Boss as well. Yep. Uh, Chris Boggs, what's the tread depth on the Boss AT? On the AT? I don't know that I saw a depth. Let me look. Or were you going to grab a caliper? I think there's one in my, where did my toolbox? Oh, I'm, like I'm standing right at it. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see. I'm, oh, you got it right there. There we go. He said the AT, right? Yep. Yes. Uh, almost six hundred thousandths. So five hundred and eighty-nine thousandths. So that's uh, that's over half inch, but under five eighths of an inch. That's that's pretty deep. What is it on the? Uh... On the MT, it's seven hundred thousandths. So. Only 100,000 is difference. And that, that AT, they're saying, is a 50,000 mile tire. So that's pretty good. Uh, Jeff Young, for a daily driver on an 05 LJ that spends time on the trails like the Rubicon, would you go with the new AT or stick with the MT? So, um, you know, this has been a, a definite conversation. Um, I, my brother Tim loves the uh, AT. Um, tires. He's, he's all, he likes the more biting edges and um, I like the more aggressive look of the MT. So it, it kind of depends on what you're after. I mean, the, the AT definitely works and um, this new one, the way it's constructed, like we said, with all those sipes and uh, this asymmetrical tire uh, tread pattern, um, I, I think you, you'd find it more than acceptable as long as you can get it in the size you want. Mike Uresco is the AT and the MT there in the studio, both DOT. Both for of these are DOT, yeah. Yeah. And by the way, um, even in the, uh, the sticky version of the MT tire, um, you can't tell the difference um, other than, you know, like if you flex the tread or something, but you have to look at the sidewall to figure out, you know, if in fact it's the X version, which is the sticky. So that's, that's what uh, we listed on our website. We sell both the DOT and the sticky um, on our website. On the website, the sticky is called the X version and um, they look identical, tread depth, everything same. Um, just that tread is softer. It's actually got the same carcass. Everything is all the same. So um, just that super sticky tread. Uh, Caro bar sex. Can I use your LJ center belly section with different long arms 
or do I have to use your suspension system to get my belly higher? 2006 LJ Rubicon. I'm currently running Rubicon Express long arms with 3.5 inch lift and 35 inch tires. Okay, so you've actually got a couple of options. Um, if you're over on a website, you can check out the Tracer kit or you can check out the Legend kit, which is our original three and four link, but the belly's actually higher on the Legend kit. And um, you can buy these in pieces and kind of do it as you can afford it. Um, both kits feature that you are able to remove the belly pan without dropping the suspension and without dropping the engine and uh, transmission and transfer case. So where everybody else's kit is all supported by the belly pan. I don't know if you know that. If you haven't had yours off, you may not realize that. But when you drop that down, you better be ready to support everything because it's all coming. So ours isn't like that. It's one of the few that is built that way. And I built it that way because I work on my own stuff. And that's a total pain when you got to support everything. So, yeah. But and you can call in, talk to any one of our guys. All of our guys that are on the phone are Jeep people. They have these kits on their Jeeps. And uh, they, they, you know, can tell you right down to what size wrench you need to be holding. So, yeah, everybody's very, very intelligent on this stuff. Um, we have a couple of event questions. Okay. Corey Lone Wolf Picard sure. like, would like to know when is the Colorado trip? The Colorado trip is uh, the first week of June. So it's called Rock Junction, and they have a website. Um, it's, it's put on by the Grand Junction Jeep Club, and um, you can check that out. Are you, you finding it there, Alex? Yeah. What are the dates? Uh, let's see, for which one? For Rock Junction. I think it's like June 2nd through 5th or something like that. Is it the UJC event? Yeah. Uh, we have first through the sixth. First through the sixth. Okay, so something right in that range, and there's a variety of activities. They that event even includes a swap meet and a car like a show and shine um, on the last day. So, um, by the way, what one of the things I love about that event is they bring in a whole rock garden, and um, you can drive your jeep through there. Um, I drive my jeep through there. You can get a ride with me. You can follow me. You can do whatever you want. Um, it's a it's a blast, and I every minute I'm not out on the trail somewhere I'm in that rock pile. So um, come on by and let's go wheeling. Uh, Stephen Williams asked if you're going to be at Smoky Mountain Jeep Invasion. I right now that's not on my schedule. Um, not that things don't change, but right now it's not there. Um, I can tell you where um, I'm about to head out. Um, I'm going to hop part of. Part of what we're doing with this brand new EXS, our, our Elite JL suspension, is um, I'm going to prove its roadworthiness. So I'm about to head out on about a thousand mile um, road trip in the Jeep. I'm not trailering it, I'm, I'm driving it. And um, we're gonna come back with a bunch of pictures and video to show everybody um, how roadworthy this uh, coil over conversion is. So I think you guys will be impressed. Um, I'm, I really want to show everybody how you can keep that factory Jeep drivetrain, put, you know, curry axles in it with the right gears and 40 inch tires and go anywhere you want to go. So we're, we're determined to show you that. Paul Kulik asked if you could please post a list of the trails that you run in Montrose. Oh, sure. Sure. Yeah, there's some good ones out there. Um, they're pretty easy to get sucked into. <laughs> We did a bunch of them on uh, the LJ Adventure this, this last summer. So uh, you can also check that out. Good. They have a, a Facebook page as well. Rick Harrington um, said Iron Horse is going to be at Jeep Beach April 22, Thursday for a big party. Nice. nice. I'm, there's always big parties. I know that Spiderweb Shades having a big party there. And... Um, I don't know, there's, and this year it's at the Hard Rock, so it's changed venues, and there's lots going on for sure. And then, of course, the, the show days are at the Speedway, which is always cool, and that's, that's where I'll be hanging out with uh, Jeff from Bruiser. 
And our ambassador, uh, Dave Rupert, uh, chimed in that he will be at Smoky Mountain Chief. Oh, Station. nice. There you go. There you go. So we will have a Gen Right representative there. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So that's cool. Um, what else? Okay, so if the questions have slowed down, I'm going to talk about wheels for a second. Okay. Sound good? Yeah. All right, Alex. Let's, let's go back to our half-cut wheel. So um, because tires and wheels go together, we're going to talk about this a little bit. And I, I just want to um, technically explain one difference. So everybody always thinks about the offset of the wheel. Um, we always talk about the backspace on the wheel, okay? The, the reason I always talk about the backspace, we always go for like a four and a half to five inch backspace on the wheel, is because when you change the width of the wheel, the offset changes, but the backspace never changes, okay? So that's an important piece to understand. So, the, so this is a eight and a half inch wide wheel, or was. Um, a lot of them come nine, 10 inches. So, so the offset number is gonna change, but the backspace number never changes, okay? So just, I, I know a lot of this is, is confusing, and we're always talking about different aspects of these things, but backspace is what really matters. You want as much backspace as your vehicle will let you have because that minimizes the scrub radius. So I don't know if you ever noticed, but you, if you put on wide wheels and wheel spacers, what happens is, is you've now got this big arc, which is called scrub radius when you turn, where before your wheel just turned like this inside the fender well. Well, now it's, it's burying itself into the, the rear fender well and into the bumper when you turn. Well, that's because you keep spacing it out. You want to keep all of the turning over the axis on the knuckle. So we've talked about this several times in our tech talks, but since we had this half cut wheel and we were talking about tires today, it was a good chance to remind you guys about backspacing. All right. Any more questions, Deb? Um, yeah, I had a little glitch, so I lost a oh. couple of them, but, um, Laura Coda commented that die trying is her favorite trail in die. Astros. The, the exit will get your attention. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Alex is like, yeah, it will. <laughs> uh, Blaine Peterson asked if we have an ETA yet on his center console. On his center console. Oh, I don't know. I thought we already got it back to him. So okay. I guess we need to double check on that. Okay. So mm -hmm. I'll, I'll check on that. Uh, let's see. Sorry about that. Uh, Jared Allen, when is the JLU EXS hitting your site with price? Uh, I'm going to work on that next week. I'm, I'm back in the office all next week, and um, I'll, I will get caught up on that stuff. Yep. Uh, Missy Howard said, add a few more miles to your trip and stop by Jersey. <laughs> I'd love to. I wish I could just stay on the road. It'd be fun. I, I really enjoy traveling and going around and meeting people and going to the different areas. So um, I did that not last year, but the year before on my 69-day uh, tour around the country and got to wheel a lot of different places and meet a lot of people. So that, that was actually pretty fun. So. Uh, Richard Jedlowski, is the TJ stretch to 103 inches technically an LJ? LOL. Uh, no, not quite. <laughs> So, and now, you know, today um, we take the 103 inch LJs and turn them into 115 inch wheelbase. So um, that's, that's, a, that's kind of the, the magic number right now. So. <clears throat> Bubba Ostrowski, on your website, you require, recommend Dana 60s with your elite coilover system for the JL. Yeah. Would Dy Dynatrack XD 60s be a decent substitute? So <clears throat> right now on the JL, the only axle that we have that works because it bumps so deep is the Curry because it's got that rollback cover and that allows it to really get up in there without the upper link getting into the bottom of the radiator or the oil pan. So um, we've, on the JK, we were able to make some of the Dynatrack stuff work but um, on the JL, it bumps another inch and a half deeper. So, um, yeah, right now, 
it's just looking like the Currys at the t for, the, for the time being. Paul Kenneth, how do you think the AT will handle in snow? I, I think it's gonna handle great. In fact, I'm, I'm planning on testing it myself because my truck is a four wheel drive and I take that thing everywhere, you know, towing, not towing. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna put it through the paces for sure. So. David Driver with wheels. Uh, do you recommend a certain type of valve stem? I busted mine on my last wheeling trip and don't have bead locks yet. Oh, <clears throat> um, so, you know, uh, almost everybody I know runs this rubber style valve stem. And um, those are, those seem to be the normal. They do need to be replaced every few years though, because the rubber just gets cracked and rotted. So um, when you replace your tires, you should put brand new valve stems in. Just good measure. They're cheap, they're like two bucks. Uh, Brandon Grejada on the 2001 TJ, will the Legend stretch kit work with the front Curry 44 and rear Curry 9 inch? That's the beauty of the Legend kit, is it's a builder's kit. So you can mix and match, you can put it on a Dana 30 if you want, you can put it on a Sterling, like you can go crazy with that thing. That just keep in mind, it's up to you to cycle it, right? So you're the one that has to, you know, put the wheels on there and cycle, you know, the whole thing and make sure that it's not running into the fenders or hitting the shocks or it's, it's a lot of work. I mean, that's, that's why people buy our Tracer and our Elite kits because we did all that, right? You don't have to think about any of that stuff. But on the Legend, that's a builder's kit, so you can do whatever you want. It, by the way, those bracket kits, I don't know if you saw, they're on our website, they start at $99. So that's pretty darn cheap. Nate, little 12.5 inch versus 13.5 inch tire width. Pros and cons, thanks for your ongoing knowledge. Ah, you're welcome, um, thanks for the question. So the, the tire companies almost always uh, don't give, necessarily give us a choice on this. So if you're in a 37 inch tire, it's gonna be a 1250, and the moment you go to a 40, it's a 1350. So in a 42 is typically a 1450. So just be prepared for that slight increase as you go up. Um, I know back, you know, when, when we're getting 33s and 35s, those all tend to stay in that 1250 up to about a, a 37. And, and we're talking about regular radial tire construction. I'm talking about Mickey Thompson, Goodyear, BF Goodrich, the, the main manufacturers, right? Not. Uh, bias ply, not these wild ones that are offshoots, you know, that they make all kinds of crazy stuff that you, you wouldn't necessarily run on the street, so. Esther Parrott Newcomb, when you're balancing tires, do you prefer balancing beads or weights? Well, I got news for you. Um, I haven't balanced a tire in years. Um, and the reason is because when you run a good tire, <laughs> you don't need to. Um, so uh, not to say that, you know, the wheels don't need some balancing. Um, you really want to use the minimal amount, right? So if you're finding that you got to add a lot of weight to get your tires balanced, then you just, you got the wrong tire. You got bad tires. So um, definitely be heads up on that. Devin Olson, uh, benefits and drawbacks to running your external stretch gas tank versus putting an internal gas tank into a TJ. Uh, I wanted to stretch my Jeep six inches in the rear. Okay, um, tanks inside the vehicle are really quite unsafe, okay? Beside the fact that if you spill while you're filling or uh, when the tank is venting, because you know, during the change of temperature in the day, the tank has to be vented to the outside. Um, you're going to smell gas all the time. Um, so that's you know, to me, that's unacceptable. I don't want to give up my cargo area. Um, I still use my Jeep to go on camping trips and do a lot of other stuff. So I, I definitely um, would not put one inside. The other benefit to down below is that it lowers the center of gravity. You know, so think about a gas tank, right? A uh, 10 gallon gas can um, weighs 80 pounds. So now you're talking about a 20 gallon tank, so there's 160 pounds that you just moved from way down low under the vehicle to up high inside about the same level as your body. 
and um, you know that just raises the center of gravity. So I'm in big favor of keeping that down below. We make plenty of tanks that are reshaped um, in all different capacities that um, would allow you to keep it down low. There's, there's no reason to put it up inside. Uh, Nick Repinich uh, said, sorry, I came in late. Did you cover if you want us to order the ATs from Genrite or direct from Mickey Thompson? So um, I, the, you know, this just released uh, three days ago on the 5th, the, this new tire. And um, I just got a set to put on my truck. And um, I, I don't know if they're available to us in the local warehouse. So right now, uh, my plan is to actually be able to sell them here and offer them to our customers. But um, I won't be able to check on that until next week and see what local availability is. But meantime, just get them. Go, go wherever you normally go and ask for the tires and uh, create that demand. You know, that, that'll help um, our friends at Mickey Thompson. So, yeah, by all means, go where, wherever you normally go and get your Mickey Thompsons. Chris Minerich, do you have experience between the Baja Boss times 40 and other stickies? I do. Um, so I've had the opportunity to run a lot of different tires over the years. And um, every tire has uh, its little things about it that shine, right? Um, I'll give you an example. Um, when I was running the Goodyear tires, um, those got softer as it got colder and the BF Goodrich's got harder as it got colder. So when we were in the snow and ice, the BFG's got super hard and the Goodyear's got super soft. The, uh, the Mickey Thompson's are that same way. They're going to get softer and uh, that high silica content in the, the rubber compound um, really makes that tire bite and, and that's, uh, that's an important part. Now when you get a Mickey Thompson sticky, it is literally the exact same tread compound that they run on their drag tires. So if you're you know, at the drag strip, it's that same gummy compound. Now, the reason we run the sticky tires um, for racing is because we have to run them at 20, 25 pounds of air, and um, we need the traction on the rocks, um, even though we have to run the hard tire pressure we, once we get in there and spin, we need them to grab. So the benefit for racing is, you know, you spin them because you got big horsepower, they get gummy and they really bite. Um, so, you know, you kind of got to decide what aspect you're going for on, uh, you know, what, what you're looking for. But the sticky, you know, all around for serious rock crawling is going to be a better tire, but they're just going to wear faster, so. You just have to keep that in mind. And by the way, the Mickey Thompson 40-inch uh, Baja Boss MT that, that we're all running, the DOT, that tire is only $435. That, that is a very inexpensive 40-inch tire. So keep that in mind, too. Uh, Tim Cahill, would you do your builds any differently if you were in the upper Midwest East Coast with extreme temperatures, changes, salt, and prone to rust buildup? It's hard to keep things looking and running nice here. Yeah. Um, so a couple of things. Um, I'd probably lean toward the Fox shocks. Those have a stainless steel shaft, which is much less likely to get damaged from the elements. Um, I would definitely uh, grease my Johnny joints uh, more often, right? You just got to push out all that bad stuff. Um, you know, where we run 7075 links, you know, maybe... Um, if you didn't run the 7075, you could go back to a steel link and be, just because they're painted. Um, but, uh, you know, for the most part, like I don't run inner fenders because I want the heat to get out. I'm, I'm usually running a higher horsepower motor and I want to get that heat out. Um, and, you know, it, quite frankly, the, the stuff doesn't get everywhere like everybody thinks it does. I mean, Alex and I were just in the mud in the JL and um, you'd be amazed that the, the mud didn't spray in toward the engine or anything. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of personal preference. You know, I like, I like the open air style Jeep. I don't, I don't like running with a hard top. I like, you know, half doors and open. Um, but, but we do get, you know, better weather. And I know the weather back there changes. Uh, but when I took my Terramoto back there, 
I, I just put on a jacket. Last time I checked, I'm waterproof. So um, I was like, yeah, whatever. So. Chris Minerich, are the 40s true to size? I'm planning on ordering a set to replace my traps that measure at 38 and one quarter. No, they, these will measure, they'll either measure 40 or 39.8. I mean, it's going to be right Mickey, there. Mickey Thompson replied to that. Oh, they did? Thirty-nine point yeah. eight. Yeah, it's yeah. it's depending on what you air it up to. Yeah. So. Yep. They're as true to the size as anybody, for sure. But I know a lot of the manufacturers fall short of that mark. You know, you buy a thirty-seven, and it's really like a thirty-six, and then forget it when you air that thing down. You're like running on a thirty-three. You know. <laughs> Pat Whitney, is there any way to measure what backspacing you need? Yeah. That's a great question. So um, basically what I normally do is um, I would turn the wheel over. I typically put a straight edge across here. And is my tape measure right here? So um, I would put a, you know, a straight edge across here and then you know, measure where it falls on the tape measure. So in this case, you can see you know, this one, I'm going to eyeball it is four and a half. So, um, you know, you could do that too, just sight across and, and kind of get a general idea of where that's at. But it's, it's to this mounting surface pad or what they call WMS, wheel mounting surface. Okay, you'll, you'll see that term or hear that term quite often when we're talking about axles, because um, we always talk about WMS to WMS. Is, so we're, we're always looking for about 70 inches to clear a 40 or a 42 to articulate. Uh, Elias Rahal, do you like Cooper STT Pro tire made in Ohio? Looking to some dirty life wheels. Do you like aluminum rims or steel? Oh, I, I definitely like the aluminum wheels, no doubt about it. Um, there are different types of aluminum wheels. So uh, most aluminum wheels that are on the market are a cast wheel. Nothing wrong with that. They've, they've actually gotten pretty good at this process. Um, I like a forged wheel. That's my personal preference, uh, pretty much uh, because of my driving style. And um, the Cooper tire is fine. It's it's the parent company to Mickey Thompson, so um, you know they're, they're they're all good quality. It's a completely different company, uh, but uh, yeah, good good stuff. I, I've got our some of our customers in Missouri running the Cooper tire, so. What else you got? Uh, Pamela Spear, are you bolting those armrests into the half door? Uh, no, no, they actually just slip right in. So these, these long posts are just like the window. You're gonna grab that? Oh, or the door, that's even better. I think, you wanna grab the other one? Yeah. yeah. Um, but they, they literally, these are the same kind of posts that you have on your soft upper window, you know, that you would take out. And um, these just drop right in. So Alex is going to bring over one of my half doors off the JL. There we go. I'll hold that and make sure we're still on camera so everybody can see. And you can kind of see the, the holes there. And then this guy just drops right inside. So it's a, it's a nice fit. You can see they're not just gonna like fall off or fly off. And a lot of the time you can grab them and close the doors by that. The, by the way, this uh, spacing has been used on every best top or Jeep door since the CJ. So my YJ had it, TJs have it, now JK, JL. So um, yeah, it's, it's really nice to just uh, drop those on. And then, you know, if you want to put your window on, you just grab them and take them off. So my little sock on my mirror here. Okay, you can go ahead and take that back. Thank you, sir. Uh, you got like one minute. Okay, and do you, are you seeing any other questions that mom's not? I've got a okay, few Deb's more got questions. More? Steve Waterman, hi, Tony. Should I install all my hardware on my new TJ aluminum half doors prior to paint and then reinstall? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Great question. And, and I like, we struggle with this every day. I just got this call about some fenders. 
you always, I don't care if it's a bumper, a fender, a rocker, uh, half doors, you always want to pre-install it, make sure that it all fits, everything's good before you spend the money to go get stuff painted. Um, I literally just got off the phone with a gentleman that ordered fenders from us, had them powder coated, waited, then went to put them on, realized he got something else, and uh, now had to reorder because he just didn't go over and test fit it. So um, you definitely want to make sure test fit first. you pre-install. Yep. Anthony Paquette, I missed Tuesday's Tech Talk, but when mounting your GPS above the passenger's grab handle, will that interfere with the airbag or are you disabling it? Um, I would disable it for sure if, if that's where you're going to mount it because um, it would interfere and uh, quite frankly it's going to turn that thing into a projectile for your passenger unless of course you don't care about your passenger and then <laughs> you're in good shape <laughs> oh man can of worms i know yeah uh isaac hormoceo hormoceo do you have tj half doors in stock i think we do i i know you know we're things are flying out the door every day um so but i got 35 people here making parts as fast as they're selling so um, even if they're not in stock, it wouldn't be long. It might be a week, maybe two at the most. So, Ken Brandt commented, Mickey Thompson, performance tires and wheels. Um, gotcha. Just put on my first set of stickies and ran the Mid-Easter Jeep and loved them. Switched yeah. from Dot, Baja Boss to stickies. Yeah, and Ken's one of the ones that made it up, uh, Widowmaker, out on uh, Metal Masher. So if you, he, I think he put the video up, too, in, uh, on his Facebook so you can type in his name and get a look at that. So, and uh, he he chose the right air pressure, so he he made it up that pretty easily. Samantha Barton commented that it would be cool if we could offer armrests that would custom match to their PRP seats. Oh, so a while back, I actually had um, PRP making these for me, and they would they would do the little beading piping. on there in the color. Yeah. Yeah, the, the piping it in the same nice. color. It did look nice, mm -hmm. yeah. So PRP has grown. You know, they're they're kind of busy, you know, to be doing armrests for us anymore. So um, we're doing that ourselves now. So, but yeah. And, and that's not to say that you couldn't take these to an upholstery guy and have him trick them out and make them really match your Jeep. Yep. Um, couple of viewers have asked, where's the yellow hat? Oh, man, I forgot I didn't have my hat on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised sorry. it took them so I know, long sorry. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's, it's in my Jeep. <laughs> and Alfie commented that we do have the TJ Half Doors in stock. Oh, there we go. Excellent. Yeah, I mean, most people don't know that I actually have a full head of hair. So. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Jamie's right over so. Keith B Biss? Bissox, uh, hey, just jumping in, very curious about what backspace and stretch is necessary for my Elite kit. I was planning on 40s, but just put 41.5s on, on my wife's Jeep, and that's really nice. Okay, so um, you're what looking- backspace? So you're looking for 70 inch, 70 inch wide, mounting surface to mounting surface, so right on the, the disc brakes which it where the wheel would sit um, and then you want a four and a half to four and three quarter if you get a depending on the wheel you get you can even go to five inch but um, you're probably for what you're doing with that big of a tire probably four and a half inch backspace would be perfect yep uh, Robert Quiros here I go again I made a truss on the axle complete completely side to side Dana 30 CJ7 I changed the stock gears for 4.88 and commonly drive shaft. So what size tire should I run? Um, so it, um, does it say high pinion, low pinion, or what, what vehicle did it say it's for? Uh, CJ7. CJ, so that's low pinion. Um, so, you know, 35, you'd be fine for sure. You could probably get away with a 37, but you're you're definitely pushing it. You'd have to be pretty light-footed on that. Um, you're going to need ram assist. You know, you, there's, there's a lot of things, and that's that's one of my 
upcoming tech talks is all these people put these bigger and bigger tires on and they can't steer. Well, you know, be ready. You know, yeah, you bought bead locks and big tires and you're already in for, you know, three, four grand. Well, plan on spending another three grand and getting your Ram Assist because you need it. You're, you're not going to be able to turn once you're aired down and blockers on and stuff. So um, that's, that's how the guys like me are doing it. I just have my Ram Assist and you can, by the way, you can turn my steering without even the steering wheel on. You can just grab the shaft and turn it. That's how easy it is. So um, they're, they're very high performance. Chris Minerich, do you know if the 42 inch Baja Boss are going to be for the 17 inch or 20 inch <laughs> wheels? Yes, they'll, they'll be for both. The 17 is coming first. Mike Uresco, what was Val Douglas total foot mileage for the swag bag giveaway? Oh, uh, I don't know that I heard. She ran a lot. She did run a lot. Um, but I, I, I kind of briefly remember her saying it, but I was talking to somebody else. And uh, so she has not to disclose that, but she's probably on she is. right now. So she can uh, tell you. Mike, Mark Colorado, I'm hearing more common failures on high pinion. What's your impression? No, oh, no. Well, so the, here's the way it works. High pinion was designed for the front axle, okay? So because it's running on the proper side of the gear, when you put high pinion in the rear, now you're running on the wrong side of the gear. So that's why everybody goes to something like a Curry 70 where... Um, that's a much bigger gear. The pinion's much bigger. So even though you're uh, running it that way, they've had a special gear made and um, that's a, a, a much beefier assembly to be able to handle that. Um, that's the same thing I've raced Ultra 4 for years with you know over 800 horsepower. I raced the Terramoto in the 4400 Classic King of the Hammers, held up just fine. In fact, it's still the same a ring and pinion and everything that I'm running today in the Terramoto. So um, that stuff's more than beefy enough. But yeah, if you if you took a high pinion 44 and put it in the rear, it'd break right away. If you put a regular high pinion 60 in the rear, it'll last a little longer, but you're going to see some significant wear because it's, it's actually pushing the gears away from each other and it's really easy to start chipping the teeth. So, okay. Any, any other um, last minute questions? Val, Val um, commented that she put in 43.72 miles. I bet. I bet. Yes. And Ken Brandt wanted to know what Alex put in. Uh, <laughs> no idea. <laughs> I don't know if it was as many, but it's something close to that. <laughs> yeah. I did the trifecta and she wasn't there. For oh, that. yeah. Uh, oh, maybe, maybe. <laughs> um, I can tell you um, her boyfriend said that she looked thinner when she got home, so. Oh, that's, funny. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. Um, that's it. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Time to say goodbye. Well, thanks everybody. I hope you um, got filled in on all your questions with Mickey Thompson. Um, we can't say enough about the tires and I uh, hope the next time you're ready to buy some tires, you check them out, whether they're mud terrains or all terrains. Uh, please check them out. Good American made company that cares about Jeep guys, so. Until next Tuesday, have a great weekend, and we'll have a whole nother report for you next Tuesday.